Okay, so we are going to be looking at now loci that look in this particular form. Previously, we've just done the modulus of z minus z1 equals some kind of constant. But this time, we've got that there's the complex number z, which is the thing that can vary. That's on both sides of the equal sign here. So what is that going to mean? Well, what I want to do is to draw our attention to just one side of this um, equal sign here and see if we can remember from before what this actually represented. Well, when I explored some vector connections when we were having a look at the circles, we came up with this kind of idea that we had here, that z minus z1, its modulus of z minus z1, was the distance between some varying number z and some fixed complex number z1. It was representing the distance between the, the two points that we've got here. So let's see if we can just draw that into the next part that we've got. So it looks like this left hand side is saying this is the distance between some complex number z and this is a general number meaning it can move and z1 and this just means the distance I'm going to write it slightly quicker it means the distance between z and z2. And so what we're saying here is we want the distance between these two things to be equal to each other. So really what this sentence mean is what this sentence means is saying uh, we're trying to say the complex number z must be equal distance from both Z1 and Z2. That's what we're saying here. We're saying that the distance between Z1 and Z2 must be the same as the distance, sorry, the distance between Z and Z1 must be the same as the distance between Z and Z2. In other words, Z must be equal distance from Z1 and Z2 or equidistance. So when we have a look at this diagram that we've got here, an obvious place where we could put z as part of our loci is going to be exactly halfway between z1 and z2. But there are of course going to be other places, it's not just going to be a single point. I wouldn't want to put it over here, right, because that's clearly going to be much closer to z1 than it is to z2. I wonder if you can think to yourself where else we would be able to place z so that it was still equal distance between z1 and z2. Well, hopefully you're maybe thinking of a number that's either over here, or maybe over here, or maybe over here, where you can see that all of these points, the arrows that I'm going to be drawing to Z1 and Z2, are of equal distance. And the pattern of these is that they should be forming a particular line. Now, before we actually say what that line is going to be, I'm actually going to have a look at it for this thing that we've got here. So just to explain what we've got, instead of it being um, Z1 and Z2, we've got A and we've got B. So we're saying that our complex number that is the thing that can move needs to be equal distance between A and B. And at the moment, you can see it's a distance of 2.6 from A and 4.2 from B. And as we move it around, obviously, there's going to be that point that's halfway between them. And that's why it's been marked on the diagram here when it's 1.4 away from both of them. And we can add in some extra points like over here and over here. And what you'll start to see is that these points are going to lie on a straight line. And as I try and sort of sketch through more of these by putting Z in different places on this argon diagram, we can see that they are forming a straight line. And I'm hoping you can spot some of the other properties about the fact that, whoops, when Z is going um, in between them, it's perpendicular to the line that would connect A and B together. Not only is it perpendicular, but it is also the bisector of the line that would connect together A and B. So the loci for this is going to be a perpendicular bisector. And that's what I've got written down here. I have written that this particular loci is going to be repre um, is represented, that's got a lot of repetition there, is represented by a perpendicular bisector of the line segment joining the points Z1 and Z2. So let's actually add this to our diagram so that we've got this in our notes here. I'm going to first of all connect Z1 and Z2 together and then I'm going to do a perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to represent my, um, my loci here using this red line and it's perpendicular and it has also bisected that line segment. So just to reiterate what I'm saying here is it is a loci because any location 
of z along this line will satisfy the property that when you take that complex number and you subtract z1 from it and you find its modulus, it would be exactly the same as if you subtracted z2 from that complex number and you found its modulus. The distance between z1 and z2 are equal to each other. If you want to have a play around on this GeoGebra link, you can just type this directly into your browser or onto like a mobile device and you should, you should also be able to have a play around with that too.